Millions of years ago, crocodiles didn't just lurk silently in rivers and swamps. They prowled openly across grasslands, forests, and plains. Built differently from today's water-bound hunters, these ancient crocodiles walked tall with longer legs, agile bodies, and razor-sharp teeth, capable of chasing prey and challenging even the mightiest land predators of their era. Yet over time, crocodiles retreated into the safety of waterways, becoming masters of ambush and patience. But evolution has a habit of repeating itself, especially when the opportunity calls. The very thought raises a thrilling question. Could a land-dwelling crocodile evolve again? To answer that question, we need to look into the past. Take Sebeccus Icheorhinus, for example, a terrestrial crocodile from the Eocene. Unlike modern crocodiles that lurk in water with only their eyes and nostrils exposed, Sebeccus was a pure land predator, built to hunt on solid ground. Fossils show it had proportionally longer legs and a deep, narrow snout, built less like a squat alligator and more like a nimble predator. These were crocodiles gone rogue, pursuing a lifestyle more like wolves or big cats of their time than the ambush hunters we know. But Sebeccus was not alone. Travel further back and across the ocean to late Cretaceous South America, and you'd find Barosuchus another land-dwelling crocodilian with a skull that would give a T-Rex a run for its money. This 3.5 to 4 meter long predator lived in hot, dry environments, walking with an upright gait on long legs. Its eyes and nostrils were positioned on the sides of its head, and a bony visor jutted over its eyes, perhaps shading them from the sun as it scanned the horizon. Barosuchus's teeth were literally compressed blades ideal for shearing meat, indicating a fully terrestrial hunting style. And there were many more. In late Cretaceous Africa, Caprosuchus, nicknamed Boar Croc, sported boar-like tusks and lightly galloped after dinosaurs on the dry floodplains. In Eocene Europe, Pristicampsis had hoof-like claws for traction and a round, unfinned tail adaptations for chasing prey on land rather than swimming. And let's not forget Australia's giant land croc, Quincana. Fossils show Quincana had deep jaws with serrated teeth and long legs, grew to about 3 to 6 meters, and reigned as an apex predator down under until as recently as 40,000 years ago. So, what would it take for today's semi-aquatic crocodiles to evolve into land rovers once more? Evolution is driven by opportunity and pressure. In the past, those land crocs thrived when and where ecological niches opened up for them. For example, after the dinosaurs fell and before mammals took over, or in isolated habitats with few competitors. If a similar shakeup had happened, crocodiles might just seize the chance to stretch their legs. Literally. Imagine an environment where water bodies start drying up where food is more abundant on land than in rivers. Over many generations, nocturnal selection could favor those with stronger, longer legs or less need to retreat to water. In fact, we have a hint of this in modern times. The Cuban crocodile is famously the most terrestrial of extant crocs with long, strong legs and reduced webbing in its feet to help it chase prey on land. Cuban crocs have a distinctive high walk, and even hop after small mammals in the forest. As one zookeeper quipped, they're the closest thing to a croc that thinks like a cougar. If a few crocodiles in, say, Africa or Australia found themselves in a dying swamp with plenty of prey scurrying on land, they might gradually favor land hunting more and more. Over millennia, that could set the evolutionary wheels in motion for a terrestrial breed. Isolation can also be a game-changer. Consider islands. On some South Pacific islands thousands of years ago, there were dwarf crocodiles, or mikosuchus, that lived mostly on land, likely hunting small animals in the forest. They were the last known fully terrestrial crocodilians, surviving up until humans arrived in places like New Caledonia and Fiji. Without large mammal predators around, these crocs had the island to themselves and adapted to a terrestrial niche until human hunters ended their party. This real example tells us that given the right conditions, crocodiles can and will evolve to be more land-based. It's not biology that stops them, it's competition. 
On continents today, big cats, canines, and other apex predators fill the land predator roles effectively. Crocodiles don't need to invade that space, they're doing just fine in the water. If hypothetically climate change or an extinction event knocked out many large land predators, crocodilians are survivors and opportunists. They might crawl out of the water and say, all right, it's our turn now. After all, ancient crocodile relatives rapidly diversified and filled vacant niches in the past. Some even became fast-moving land herbivores, especially when competitors weren't around. So yes, under the right evolutionary pressures, say a world with changing waterways, isolated ecosystems, or a lack of other predators, a population of crocodile could gradually shift to a terrestrial lifestyle. It wouldn't happen overnight. Don't expect to see a croc trotting across your lawn next week, but over thousands or millions of years, it's conceivable. Essentially, if Mother Nature gives crocs an eviction notice from the water or a lucrative job offer on land, they might evolve to become the new track stars of the reptile world. How would such a beast make a living in today's world? For starters, our land croc would likely be an ambush specialist, much like its water-loving cousins. Only the ambush would happen from behind bushes or rock outcrops instead of underwater shallows. Think of the hunting style of a big cat combined with the raw power of a croc. It might lurk in tall grass, remaining motionless with its camouflaged, scaly body blending into the background. Then, boom! A lightning-fast rush and a devastating bite. Modern crocs can strike with explosive speed. On land, freed from water's drag, a croc can accelerate even faster over a short distance. Prey would have to contend with a predator that's incredibly silent and still one moment, then a scaly blur of teeth the next. Competition-wise, a land-dwelling crocodile would face off against the reigning kings of the land, mammals. This is where things get interesting. Could a cold-blooded reptile really compete with lions, tigers, or wolves? Possibly, if it plays to its strengths. Crocodiles are masters of energy conservation. A land croc likely wouldn't chase prey for miles the way a wolf pack might. Instead, it would conserve its energy and pick the perfect moment to strike. Our croc might also exploit times or places others avoid. For instance, it could be crepuscular or nocturnal, doing much of its hunting at dusk or night when the air is cooler and many animals are less active or less wary. Imagine a huge crocodilian predator creeping through the savanna at twilight while other predators are already yawning and calling it a day. In direct confrontations, a land croc would be a fearsome adversary. Its thick hide, the osteoderms and crocodile skin, giving it a defense advantage over, say, big cats which rely more on agility. A lion trying to claw a four-meter croc might find it a tough proposition to injure that armored back. On the flip side, the croc's jaws could deliver bone-crushing bites. One crunch on a leg could incapacitate a large prey animal, or even discourage a competing predator from sticking around. We might see land crocs occasionally scavenging kills or stealing carcasses, much like hyenas or leopards do, scaring off lesser predators with their sheer presence. To survive, a terrestrial croc would have to manage its body temperature and hydration. Unlike mammals, reptiles can't sweat and don't have internal temperature control. So, our land croc would need behavioral tricks. Likely, it would bask in the mornings to charge up solar energy, just as crocs and lizards do now. Then go hunting once it's warm, but before it overheats. In terms of diet, a land croc would be an opportunist. If it's big, it could bring down large herbivores, wildebeest, deer, wild pigs, maybe even cattle if near farms. That would be a human croc conflict nightmare. It could also snack on smaller animals if big game is scarce. Think rodents, birds, lizards, or carrion. Crocodiles are not picky eaters by nature. A terrestrial species would likely be similar, taking what it can. It might even have an easier time finding food because it's not limited to prey that comes to the water. On the flip side, it would have to work harder for its meals. No convenient drowning tactic to subdue prey. It would have to rely on biting and maybe shaking or ripping prey apart. When it comes to surviving in modern ecosystems, a new land croc would initially occupy fringe niches, 
perhaps thick swamps, mangrove forests, or remote floodplains where it can experiment with terrestrial hunting without immediately bumping into a pride of lions. Over time, if successful, it could spread into savannas or woodlands. It might become the apex predator in places where the big cats are absent or in decline. Consider parts of Australia today. No big felid predators, lots of feral pigs, kangaroos. A land croc might do quite well there, just as its ancestor Quincana did. Or imagine the Florida Everglades. If climate change reduced the waterways, alligators might adapt by ranging farther on land to catch feral hogs and birds. Let's step back and take a scientific look at the odds. We know crocodilians can evolve for land. The fossil record proves that many times over. We also see hints in modern species, like the Cuban crocodile's terrestrial tendencies, that the raw material is there. The question is more, will they, given the current world? The truth is, as of now, crocodiles are extremely successful at what they do. They've been around in roughly their current form for about 80 million years, largely because of their semi-aquatic ambush niche is an enduring winner. In evolutionary terms, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. For a land-dwelling crocodile to evolve again, something in that balance likely needs to shift. Either a random group of crocs gets isolated from aquatic environments, pushing them to adapt to land out of necessity, or the mammalian competition diminishes, creating an open niche. Evolution of that magnitude would likely take tens of thousands to millions of years. Humans have only been seriously observing and recording wildlife for a few centuries, so it's no surprise we haven't witnessed such a dramatic transformation in crocodiles yet. If a land croc evolution is a slow burn, we might not even notice it in our short lifespans, or even our civilization's lifespan. Let's assume, though, that in some remote corner of the world, the stage is set and humans leave it alone. Could a new land croc emerge? Scientifically, it's within the realm of possibility. It's a captivating thought because it changes the notion that crocodiles are finished products or living fossils stuck in their ways. If the need arises, who's to say they can't surprise us again? That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.